Dr. David Anderson here, and with me I have this lovely lady, it's Lisa Bryson, and boy does she have a story. And the good news about Lisa Bryson, she gives God all the glory with her story. And even as we talk about being under God's conviction, we know that God is always doing construction in our life and, and moving us toward the best us. And as we've been talking at Bridgeway about breaking through to the best you, you're not always sure what the best you looks like, especially when you come into somebody and they ain't at their best self. But what happens when God does a miracle and God does a work? It is amazing. And you are an amazing, miraculous work of God. Lisa, thank, thank you for goodness. being here. Thank you. Tell us about Praising Through Recovery. That is the name of the ministry that you oversee. Yes. Praising Through Recovery um, is actually a nonprofit organization. Mm -hmm. We have a couple of transitional houses in Hartford County, right. one for men yeah. and one for women who are looking to change their lives, mm. to transform their lives from an addicted life to, um, to a brand new person yeah and so uh, God has blessed us with that so they come in addicted they come they come in in recovery okay. about 28 to 30 days okay clean and sober okay and we open from, up from a heroin from um, cocaine okay. from alcohol okay. meth um, any any drug okay any drug any substance and now they have a desire down. to get better that's and right. to stay sober and that's where you help them exactly mm -hmm. exactly and so we bring them into these homes and we teach them a new way of living or reintroduce to them right. um, how to live again. Wow. So you have men living in a house? We have a have separate house for men. Living in a house. Yes. And I've been, by yeah. the way, yes. and it's amazing to meet the yes. women yes. Uh, and to see the work that you have been doing. A lot of people may not know, Lisa, your story. Mm -hmm. How did you get to a place where you're overseeing mm -hmm. a ministry called Praising Through Recovery, where you're helping women become sober, you're helping men become sober? Mm -hmm. And even here at our church, for people who have uh, addictions, you help them privately mm -hmm. work on their program so that they can stay sober. Right. What got you here? Okay, well, um, basically I grew up in, in church all my life, being a good little church girl. Um, over a period of time and at a very young age and very young in my marriage with my husband James, um, I was raped by a church leader mm. um, and holding on to that secret. Mm. And um, How old were you? I was probably, I was 21. Wow. Okay. I was 21 years old, had mm. been married about a year, mm. about a year or two, we got married kind of young. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and I was scared to say anything because wow. I was scarred, I was yeah. bruised and I felt dirty yeah. and very violated. So I didn't tell my husband, I didn't tell anyone at the church, I moved on um, with my life. Wow. And as I moved on with my life, I began to build resentments against the church, mm. against God, against men mm. in general. And, um, and so I eventually left the church. Mm. And in leaving the church, I was introduced to um, my very first drink. And I was probably, at this time, I was probably about 26 or 27. So you're now out of church for about five, six years, mm -hmm. resenting the church, yes. violated by a church leader yes. as a married woman. Yes. Uh, did you tell your husband? No. So you really told no one? No one. And so now you are introduced to your first drink at 26? Yes. And did that just become an addiction right away? And right away. I went wow. in like a veteran. Um, we uh, usually, they, they're usually stages to um, addiction. Right. And um, it's usually um, recreational, experimental, recreational, abusive, and then addictive stages. Um, when I found that drink, it, it just covered up everything that I needed wow. to cover up. Mm -hmm. And I went and hid first. Wow. And um, within a matter of a couple of months from my first drink, I was sniffing cocaine Whoa. and then, then heroin. That quickly? And, that quickly. So that was a gateway into a whole world of it, it, yeah, yeah. drugs? into an entire world of drugs. Did that affect your marriage, your family? It, it certainly, it certainly did. Um, my life began to spiral out of control really, really fast. My husband, my parents, no one knew what was going on. What's going on with, with Lisa? Me. Exactly, because mm. I went from directing the choir to um, spending all of my time um, closest to the thing I loved the most. Wow, so back when you were 21 and violated, you were directing the choir back then. Yeah, yeah. And so you were kind of injured big time. Uh, yeah, With yeah. family serving yeah. and everything. Now well, the, yeah. you're in the world. Now I'm in the world. I'm completely different from anything that I knew um, before. Did you know God was still there? No. Okay, so no. you had kind of turned off God too. Uh, yeah, I ran mm. away. Mm. I ran away because I was dirty. Mm. Um, I didn't want God to see my scars. Yeah, yeah. How could I be 
in the presence of a holy God when my life is so dirty. Yeah. That's yeah. what's going on in your head. Yes. And then, so what happened from there? Um, from there, um, my life began to take many, many turns and twists. Um, I started staying away from home and from my small children. And, um, and my husband was working and, and I was working eventually. I lost my job because I couldn't keep it mm -hmm. um, because my life was just spiraling completely out of control. Mm -hmm. um, I became very angry, very, very bitter. Yeah. Um, I had a hard time connecting with my husband mm -hmm. um, because when we got married, we were both virgins, mm -hmm. but now I'm really scarred, and and so I started mm -hmm. turning to uh, not just drugs and alcohol, but to um, to many many um, really bad relationships, very unhealthy. Mm -hmm. um, so even while you were married, even while now you're having bad relationships. Yes. Okay. Yes. So you're getting sexually involved. Yes. With men uh, and mm -hmm. women. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you're still married. Yes. And what? is going on with hubby right now What's is he going, like yeah. out the door yeah no no he he's not out the door um he he continued to chase me really? he continued to come looking for me and, wow. and he would bring me back home and i and he would clean me up really and he'd he, take you off the streets yeah. bring you home and clean yeah. you up yeah wow yeah he would have to find me sometimes but he would search and search until he found me. Unbelievable. And, um, and he was trying to work and trying to take care of the kids and, and my so children loved home. me. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And they loved me. They wanted nothing but to have their mother there. Mm -hmm. um, but it's something about guilt and shame that will, um, that will blind mm -hmm. love. Yeah. It'll blind love yeah. and, and affection. And, and I couldn't allow my children to see me that way. Every time they saw me, I was dirty. So you didn't want to go high. home because you didn't want them to see you like this. No, no. So no. you stayed in the streets. I stayed in the streets. And Until the only, hubby would come find you somewhere. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and there were times where the kids would be crying because they didn't want me there because I would come and I would take money and I would steal things. And, from them, um, from, from the them. House. Yeah, mm -hmm. things that I might have bought them. Oh, wow. And then we'll go back mm -hmm. and pawn them. Gotcha. And so you could get money to feed the addiction. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And um, and I remember the story of my husband telling the kids, you just wait until you meet the woman I married. Mm. You're going to love her as much as just I do. Just wait until you meet the woman I married. Yeah. Were the kids asking dad why are you still with her? Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. But he was yeah. holding on. He was holding on. He wanted his own children to meet this woman that he said, I yeah. do too. Yeah, mm. yeah. That's yeah. amazing. It is amazing. My wow. husband is amazing. Wow. Um, and after court, my husband put me in the car. I had been locked up for about three months at that time. I was completely dry. And the very mm. first day, I said, take me to the liquor store. Oh, wow. The very first day. Wow. And then I told him I wasn't going home with him because if, it was, if he was a strong man, you know, um, he wouldn't let me run over top of him. If right. he was a strong man, he wouldn't have a wife yeah. that's a prostitute and a, yeah. a drug addict. Yeah. If he was a strong man, you know, he would have slapped me around and got rid of me. Mm. My thinking and my concept of life was so distorted. Mm. And so he took me to a motel on 40 West and, um, and it's in that motel and he dropped me off and he said, Lisa, stay out of trouble. Mm. You only have two weeks don't leave this motel. And he shut the door and I began to drink. Mm. And within that night, I started walking up and down Route 40 and went right back to what I knew. Back to the old life. Back to the old life. Tricking and drinking and yeah. all of that. And using. Yep. And so then what happened? Thank God you didn't die. Yeah. Thank God yeah. you didn't get hit. Thank God nobody yeah. Yeah. took your life. Right. So God's right. hand must have still been on you. You yes. just didn't know it. Just didn't know it. Okay. And um, and my sister had been coming to make sure that I was eating that week, and she had called me up, and she called my dad, and she said, "Lisa doesn't sound right," mm -hmm. and um, and so they got in the car and they came out, and I didn't open the door. They um, made the manager open the door, and I laid there on the floor where I was dying. Mm -hmm. And my dad, who was probably in his 70s at the time, a small man, but I probably weighed about 100 pounds, if that. Mm -hmm. And he picked me up and put me in the car and uh, where they had to revive me and pump my stomach. Mm -hmm. I woke up three days later at a three mental institution later. in wow. Rockville, Maryland. Wow. And it was there of waking up in that, in that dark, cold, mental institution 
that God revealed himself to me, that he literally left his throne mm. and came all the way to hell mm. to save me, wow. to show me how much he loved you me. You saw him there. I saw him. Yeah. I saw him. As I was opening the door to hell, he shot it. Mm. And that was my first spiritual awakening. Oh, my gosh. Mm. It was amazing.